Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about um, female sterilization, uh, some of the most common ways that we currently do that. Uh, a permanent sterilization is what we're talking about here. Um, we're going to be going over three different methods of sterilization, some elective, some not. The first two are elective, and that is a laparoscopic tubal ligation or an Escher procedure. Uh, and the third one is chlamydia or pelvic inflammatory disease. And I'm just going to bring that up just because of its prevalence on board exams and because of its similarity to uh, Escher procedure in uh, process, not in actual um, technique, obviously. Um, but the first one we're talking about is laparoscopic tubal ligation. Now, this is something that um, you know a lot of uh, postpartum mothers will elect to have when they've had the number of children that they desire. Um, you'll see it a lot um, done even, not even laparoscopically, but tubal ligation uh, following cesarean section or C-section. Um, this is a very common way, um, a very uh, a safe way to permanently sterilize a, a female. And what happens in this procedure, either laparoscopically or um, open, uh, openly, like, if, like I said, after a C-section, is we go to both sides Isolate that fallopian tube, which is this, this tube entering into the uterus here, right? So we have the uterus, cervix, vagina, fallopian tubes, and they would normally go over here to an ovary. We have a different video kind of about that. Um, but what they're going to take is they're going to isolate this. They're going to cut away all the surrounding ligaments and tissue here or dissect through and have just this tube here. Then I'll show what happens. This is the first step will be dissecting through here. And the second step is going to be they're going to mobilize it almost up into a little loop here. And there's enough play there with the fallopian tube. Obviously this is just a rough schematic, so it's not that much, not that pronounced. But they're gonna mobilize it here. Um, they'll take sutures or a string, like stitches, and they'll tie this off here, usually multiple times, and they'll tie this together so that you already kind of have put a kink, like, an, like a kink in the hose. But they're not done there. Um, they will actually cut out a section of the tube. So they'll make like a cut here and a cut here take this section away and send it to pathology or send it to some uh, lab people who say, hey, you have the entire fallopian tube, uh, looks healthy, and you got the whole thing. You don't need to go back in. And so then after you, after you remove this section, you know, what are we left with? Well, we're left with two ends, right, that have been cut and are no longer attached that are still tied together. So, you know, you're definitely not going to have any more ovulation because even if even if these ties didn't work and didn't clamp down hard enough, the egg would just uh, go off. But that's we're still not that's still not good enough for us. That's still not sure enough to ensure permanent sterilization. Um, so what we do is we take electrocautery or a, a bovi or some, uh, some sort of you know um, bipolar or mon monopolar cautery, and they go and they actually burn these ends of of the fallopian tubes here. They cauterize them just like you're going to cauterize a bleeding vessel. You're going to cauterize these open tubes. So now both ends are burnt. So when you think about this, it's almost like there's three different ways that we have stopped ovulation proceeding from the ovary to the fallopian tube into the uterus. The first way is the suture, which is usually done once or twice or three times. It's really kink down and cinch down on that fallopian tube. The second is actual removal of the missing piece here of the fallopian tube. So there's, there's no more conduit from the ovary to the uterus. And then lastly, we uh, cauterize or actually burn down, scar down those remaining pieces of the fallopian tube. So there's three different ways that a tubal ligation, whether laparoscopic or open, stops ovulation. Now let's talk about the second way, which is kind of a, a younger way. I think it came around like 2003 or 2002, the Escher procedure. Um, and what this does is, the nice thing about this is we don't have to make any incisions. We don't have to cut in. So even with laparoscopic total li tubal ligation, um, you still have these small, you know, uh, eight millimeter um, incisions on the patient's abdomen, which predisposes the patient to, although rare, complications like infection or um, problems healing, um, fascia adhesions, that sort of thing. So um, the nice thing about the Escher procedure is it's transcervical. Now, what does transcervical mean? Well, we have a cervix, right? Our females have a cervix, vagina, cervix. So we can um, sedate the patient, go in through the vagina, go up through the cervix, so we're into this uterine cavity here, which is actually, it's, it's quite small. Um, you can... Um, insufflate that uh, or fill up that uterine cavity with fluid so you can really see we're doing this is kind of like you use a scope to look in there um, and you can put into each um, into the entry into the ostium of each fallopian tube you can put these little coils like little metal coils and you kind of spin those or put those up into the fallopian tube right here 
Um, and what happens after you put that in there, not only does it just kind of provide a mechanical block, right? Because it's gonna be hard for an egg to get around a, a metal coil. But also what happens is the floating tube and the, the little Austin, which is that part that opening into that floating tube in the uterus, it all kind of scars down. It says, hey, this is a foreign thing. And just like if you have a splinter that, you know, it's been in there too long, you're, there's inflammation there. So what happens is there's kind of this inflammatory response that scars down on that little metal coil. And so not only do you have this mechanical coil in there, but then this floating tube really starts to just scar down. It gets a little bit thicker and it scars down. And it says now, if, you know, if there wasn't a mechanical obstruction there now, now there's definitely going to be one just due to this, this, uh, this inflammation. And so now what happens is if we have that ovary and the floating tube, uh, you know, you'll ovulate, but there's just no way you're going to be getting past that. It's, it's very, very rare. It's like 0.02% failure rate of this Esher procedure once those coils are in there. Now, the reason why I brought up this story away, which is chlamydia, and obviously isn't an elective um, form of uh, sterilization, is that if you have a bad case of chlamydia that goes untreated, you know, or for whatever reason it just gets out of hand, you can have that chlamydia, it's, which is a sexually transmitted disease, um, you know, ascend into the uterus, into the uterine cavity. It's really bad and turn in what's called pelvic inflammatory disease or PID is often how you see it denoted. And pelvic inflammatory disease is just, it's, infl it's inflammation similar to that Esher procedure and that inflammation can occur all throughout the, you know, the pelvis, the uterine cavity. And if that inflammation reaches to the fallopian tube, you know, it might be one-sided, might be bilateral, that inflammation can cause that same mechanical obstruction um, as the Esher procedure. And once that, that obstruction is there, it's very hard to correct it. I mean, you you know, this this if you have a very bad chlamydia infection that leads to a pelvic inflammatory disease um, type obstruction of that fallopian tube, it's very unlikely, if it's bilateral, it's very unlikely that patient will be able to get uh, pregnant again. It's very hard to treat. Even if you, know, even if you cleared up the chlamydia and uh, gave antibiotics, that pelvic inflammatory disease will laugh. I mean, if they, so a board's question, for example, and that's the reason why I bring this up is because it's so dang prevalent on boards, is you'll have a, um, you know, a childbearing age female who has a history of chlamydia infections and now just cannot seem to get uh, pregnant. You know, they had a chlamydia infection five years ago and it was, it went too long, it was untreated, but it not, it, you know, it finally got treated, but now she still can't get pregnant. That's, what they're gonna want you to answer is something about pelvic inflammatory disease. Um, and that kind of goes over three common ways that uh, females today are sterilized permanently. Um, the first two being elective and the last one being non-elective. Thanks.